Good morning, friends. I'm Professor D. N. Reddy, Vice Chancellor of JNT University, Hyderabad. I'm sorry I barged into this session because I'm supposed to come in educators enclave next session because I had I had some urgent meeting. I request the organizers and they told me at least come for ten minutes here. That's why I barged into this session. I'm not making any presentation because of the lack of time. Uh, Sri Biswal is a principal secretary of uh, higher education government of Andhra Pradesh, chairing of this session. Other distinguished panelists, invitees, Professor Rajshekar Pillay, is the Vice Chancellor of IGNO, is here. Other uh, distinguished members, participants, ladies and gentlemen. At the outset, I would like to compliment the organizers for uh, organizing this particular e India ICT event, great event in Hyderabad. Particularly, uh, quality of higher education and technical education enhancing in this country, use of ICT is a versatile is required. So today we are uh, talking about digital learning. So we are talking about knowledge-based economy. Knowledge-based economy is the important thing required for development of the nation. Okay. So today's student is digitally mobile. So teachers should be also IC, ICT savvy. It should be there. Otherwise, student cannot move digitally. So today, not necessarily students should come to the classroom. Even sitting at home, he can learn. That's the possible because of technology enabled learning. So world order is today knowledge economy. So in the uh, digital learning philosophy, what we require is the physical infrastructure and also ICT infrastructure. These two are the essential factors which we need to focus in this country. Because the, this is a vast country, we have a lot of higher education. is only 12 percent high. Youngsters are coming to higher education. So we need to only large, ex small extent like IITs and IIITs, IGNO and some universities only, they're using ICT for teaching learning enhancement. But we need to go a long way, particularly imparting education, quality education to the student. So use the uh, uh, ICT, particularly for teaching learning is very important. So normally quality of higher education, anyway defined is the based on the infrastructure, teaching learning practices, high qualified faculty, and also enhancing the skills which are important. In our country, unfortunately, the skill base is only 12%. Whereas if we take a country like Korea, there are 86% skills are there. So we need to go a long way. Large human risk base is there, but skills are lacking in our country where we require to. So what is actually uh, we're talking about IT? It's a marriage between computers and electronics led, led to the invention of IT. IT is nothing but to store the data, retrieve the data, manipulate the data, communicate with the data. That's what the information technology. Internet technology is the greatest technology. How you make use of for teaching, learning practice is very important for all of us. I think earlier speaker, they have given different applications in medical and other areas. How one should orient it towards the enhancing the uh, learning capability. So somebody said uh, it's the teacher has to learn more than the student. It is true in this digital era. Because they, we're talking about student-centric learning, teacher-centric learning, but nowadays focus is on the learning-centric environment. The learning is very important. Teacher has to learn, student has to learn, then only the, the skills will be enhanced. When you're teaching learning in most of the universities, what you are doing is the LCD and PowerPoint-based presentations. Even that is also very limited, not much used in many universities and colleges. So web-based teaching methodology. They have a connectivity to the web and also teach, take their case studies, example from various applications, then we teach, require to teach in the classroom. Similarly, multimedia approach. Multimedia approach is normally popular in schools because the visuals and also audio, that will be have a eye catching. Even for technical education, we require you want to demonstrate for aerospace engineering or automobile engineering or for mechanical engineering. Multimedia approach, it will be better for working model we can show them in the classroom. Similarly, graphic packages, graphic pattern, visuals, similarly medical diagnosis has shown because heart beating, all that is possible to show we have a visuals are there, graphic packages, high resolution, video is required. Similarly, uh, models and charts we use normally. So e-learning is the one new technology which is worldwide used but India had to take off. To limited extent, uh, technology enabled learning, particularly talking about TEL. So, uh, Ministry of Information Technology, Government of India has uh, sanctioned about 100 crores. Particularly, all IITs, six IITs, they joined together, developed NPTEL, National Program on Technology Enabled Learning. They developed about 1,000 uh, in form of a series, DVDs, and also video on demand. 
So YouTube technology are using for particularly making available this content for self-financed engineering college in the country. It's a small beginning, but quality and all that required to be enhanced further. And uh, other part is the M-learning, particularly in Japan and uh, Korea and also in Hong Kong universities are using M-learning. M-learning is today using a chip because we have a largest VLSI is there, developed very large scale integrated circuits are there. Chip design is millions of transistors could be impregnated in a small chip. It is possible in a mobile phone. We can give the assignment to the, all the students, different assignment students, and also teach them in the, through mobile and individually submit to the teacher through email or the SMS. So M-learning is popular in particularly Hong Kong universities. There also we need to go. Some other application is concerned is online learning. Online learning, we experimented in our university, in JNT University, Hyderabad. Uh, we have a collaboration with the um, um, Carnegie Mellon University, CME Pittsburgh. Particularly, we are offering two years master's program in MSIT, master's program in IT, where 150 students, we give them online content is available from Carnegie Mellon, and uh, online testing is done, and mentor concept is used. Every 10 students, uh, one mentor. We will be able to uh, guide the student. And it's 24 hours learning. It's not uh, confined only 9 to 5 p.m. It's not so. So all the time, student can go to hostel, come back in the middle of, middle of the night. Anytime he can walk in, his system is reserved, connectivity is there. So it's kind of new experiment is done, in particularly in MSIT program, where Triple H Hyderabad and J into University are administering this particular program. Same experiment is continued for Rajiv Gandhi Knowledge University in Andhra Pradesh. So three Triple ITs, 10th level students are picked up, and a six years program in getting the engineering degree. This also the same experiment to use in MSIT is being used for Rajiv Gandhi Knowledge University, particular three places in Andhra Pradesh, with the 2,000 intake at every year. So a large experiment is being done, particularly using technology. So normally what happened is e-learning is very important, particularly we have a large number of engineering institutions in this country, and we have nearly 430 universities are there. And some more universities, Government of India policy encourage another 1,000 universities to come in this country, 5,000 colleges. So the large extent, I request the other organizations to concentrate on particularly e-learning. Because university, we are also trying our best to see that because my university alone, I have 300 engineering college affiliated to me. I have 386,000 affiliated to me. So I have to conduct tests for them, giving lessons for them. Testing also, what I do is we have a uh, online testing, we do it. I give the object type of questions and uh, they just download about five minutes before. Or then the hard copies are given them and the evaluation is done. Similar, next day, they have to upload into the portal. Similarly, we also distribute the question paper online. So four sets of question paper, electronic distribution, EDEP system call, electronic distribution of exam papers. So we just give half an hour before password. Because otherwise what happened is, uh, uh, earlier we used to put on the web three days before. The students are so smart, they're breaking the password and they access the question papers and they're available in the market one day before exam. So we have bigger, higher bandwidth is required because all the colleges are accessing. So many question paper, just putting one hour before, and even the encryption is there, public key, private key, but still they're breaking security, all the features. This is a challenge for technology. Technology also useful at the same time, mischief also can be done. So we have, we have tried to standardize this, particularly conducting examination. E-learning is the mode is one, in fact, we're looking for some help from different organizations. We have a set up a center for e-learning solutions in our JND University, particularly these 386,000 students, we want to make available the content for them. The MIT has done it, open source courseware is available from MIT. But India, any university has to come out with this, ignore some experimentation has done for PG diploma, other program. But versatilely, many universities in the country, we are not able to do. The content should be made available to self-finance institution because low quality students will be there, faculty shortage is there. Because they have other info, electrical power problems will be there. Even they don't have bandwidth, they don't have internet connectivity. In this endeavor, we want to increase this, enhance the skills, improve the quality of technical education. That means we are challenging for all of us. All of us has to do something for this country, where the quality of education. One way you are saying that our enrollment is only 12%. We want to enhance to 25%. Simply expanding also no use quantity. Quality is also required. Skill is required. So today, NASCAM report says that only 23% students are employable. Even Andhra Pradesh, it's only 15% employable. We have nearly 2,50,000 students we take in engineering courses. Imagine, 25% in the country, 
from Andhra Pradesh. So particularly virtual classroom is one mode we require to concentrate, other is the virtual laboratory. I have seen in Sweden, recently I visited Breaking Institute of Technology Sweden, they have experimented their remote labs. Lab equipment in this room, so the, or anybody in the country, they can log into the experimentation, they can have virtual lab, they connect the kind of lab. Otherwise, what happened, a huge amount of money invested every college in setting up the equipment. Embedded system kit is there, VLSA is there, or in engineering or aerospace. So everywhere, a uh, lot of money is wasted. Suppose your equipment is set up, one lab is established, anybody can log on, virtual lab. I have seen in Sweden it's working well. In fact, we also request them to help our university. Many other organizations also could come forward setting up remote labs. I can go aggressively for 300 colleges in a six department every college. That means it will be more than about 180 labs. So required. It's a challenging, stupendous class. So money is not a problem. Technology availability is a problem. So connectivity problems are there. Most of the time, you don't get internet. When I want to talk to, yeah, I just close in one minute. And uh, most of the time we experimented at now we are paperless. We don't uh, write any letters to the principals or to the all colleges. We only put in a portal. They have to access and reply either Mars or valuation or schedule, everything. We are trying to do our best, but still we have to go a long way because indiscipline in this country, we have to put them in track. So that is the more important. So presently technology enabled learning is concerned. NPTEL, IIT, they have developed a, as I told you, in a DVD and a video format. CDP in IIT Mumbai, Center for the Distance Education Program, they have done some experimentation. So in MSIT we have done, and MIT, uh, they have put a open source software. This national vision of education through ICT, Ministry of Information Technology, coming out with a thousand crores project. And the experimental basis, uh, their national knowledge network, about 100 nodes, 50 to 100 nodes they want to do in 11th plan period. And ultimately, in this country, we want to connect all the colleges, all the universities, a very ambitious project in 10 years' time. About 5,000 nodes will be connected. Sharing of information, resources will be made available. And even though we have a national knowledge network using NICnet, AirNet, and also UGC InfoNet is there. InfoNet, InfoBinet is there. Similarly, uh, this basically concept is electronic digital broadband network connectivity. Ultimately, the uh, present system is concerned, uh, our university also in the first phase, where 500 to 1,000 nodes will be added. Sharing of the, and also video, video conference facility, interactive mode, collaborative learning. I am sure that country is uh, going ahead, but still a lot of teething troubles are there, but technology-wise, in fact, many vendors come to me every day, at least two, three, particularly in the e-learning. I tell them, you show me one lesson in a particular topic, your chosen area, you demonstrate, if it is high quality resolution, their money is not a problem. I can spend even 20, 30 crores. But vendors, they disappear. Even after two, three months, again, a small demo, they bring it, which is not quality. Everybody is talking about learning managed system, LMS. Everybody is pioneer. Everybody is expert in LMS. But real developing content is important. Because our student required, because lack of faculty, high resolution content is available. They can able to absorb better. So it's a challenging for all of us. I'm not blaming you, not blaming my university. All of us have to join in one family, see that how our country progress in this endeavor. I would like to thank the organizers uh, for accommodating me in this session. I thank the chairman for giving me time. I'm sorry for taking a little more time. Thank you very much.